you just got an email. But oh no, it's the dreaded how much do you charge email. And let's be honest, we all hate that email. It's like treading through a nebulous swamp, hoping to find the right price for the right client. If you feel anything like that, I've got a strategy that might just help you. Hey fam, welcome to the Fruitful Life, where I hope to encourage and inspire you on how to live a creative, purpose-driven life. My name is Ashwin Chako, and today we're talking about pricing and strategies. So to get started, let's look at the three key base models that most people use when it comes to pricing. The first is the hourly based pricing model. It's exactly what it says on the tin where you set a fixed hourly rate that you charge a client and your payout is the summation of all the hours you worked on that project. The second one is a project based pricing model where you have a fixed rate for a specific job. So for instance, if I create a lot of posters, maybe I have a set rate like 300 euro for every poster that I do. And that way, regardless of who the client is, how big or small, they all get charged the standard rate of 300 for a poster. And the third and most important of the pricing models is the value based pricing model. Now the value based pricing model works very different from the other two. The pricing range is different for every client because it fluctuates on a scale of relativity to the value of what you can bring to that client. So a small company is not going to be to charge the same amount as a large company because the value of the problem that you solve for that company is going to vary quite drastically. So to put it simply, the smaller the problem, the smaller the fee, the larger the problem, the larger the fee. It might be the same job, but to a larger company, the value of that job is a lot higher because of the revenue that job is going to produce for that client. Of the three, the value-based pricing model is the one that I would recommend. In the value-based pricing model, we use a flat rate pricing. That means I charge a single fee as opposed to an hourly rate. Why don't I use an hourly pricing? Well, imagine we hire two different illustrators for the same job, Mr. Apple and Mr. Banana. Mr. Apple is experienced and he charges 100 euros per hour. It takes him three hours to finish the job. He makes 300 euro. Mr. Banana is less experienced and he charges 30 euro per hour. After a lot of humming and hawing, he finally finishes his job 10 hours later. Guess how much he makes? He makes 300 euros. So both worked on the same job. Apple did it efficiently and at a high quality. Banana took three hours and the amount they earned was still the same. So early, the early pricing model punishes efficiency and experience. And the more experienced you get, or the less you're gonna make in the long term. You might say, just up the hourly rate, but there is a ceiling as to how high you can go with your hourly rate before the client's just gonna say flat out, a flat out no, because they don't see the value of what you're bringing to the table. So how do we decide the fixed rate on a value-based system? For illustrators and creatives, our most important asset is our IP. And so rather than selling our IP, we usually license our work to our clients for a specific use. So the rate is calculated using four key aspects. Number one is usage. So how is the illustration going to be used and in what context? So for instance, is it going to be a magazine cover? Is it going to be a billboard? Is it going to be a web banner? The pricing is going to vary drastically depending on what the illustration is going to be used for. So a billboard is going to pay much more than say a web banner because the value it brings to the client is drastically different. Number two is duration. A license agreement usually states the time given for the usage of that particular artwork. For instance, in magazines, typically they require um, little more than 90 days from the date of publication. But in other areas of business, the timescape can shift drastically 
anywhere between a year to five years to everything in between. Once the duration has expired, all rights off the illustration go back to the illustrator. Should the client like to use it for other things or expand the duration, the, those terms can be negotiated with the illustrator. Number three is territory. And that's a simple one. What specific location is the licensing being created for? Is it specific to Ireland? Is it specific to the EU? Is it EU and the world? And so based on which one, the, your rate is going to expand. So it's obviously going to be cheaper in one country in one location. And the more countries you add, the more expensive your license gets. And number four is the client. So you're looking at the size of the client. Are they a big client? Are they a medium client? Are they a large client? Because the pricing is gonna vary based on that because the value of your illustration is gonna shift drastically between the three. So to sum up, when it comes to pricing for illustration, you don't want to give away your IP unless it's a very specific job like a branding or a logo and then you can charge a substantial fee for selling your IP. When it comes to pricing, there are four key areas you're looking at. One is, number one is usage. So what is the illustration gonna be used for? Number two is duration. How long is the client gonna use the illustration for? Number three is territory. Which area is he, going, he or she gonna be using it in? whether it's uh, a specific location, one country or worldwide. Number four is looking at the client themselves and valuating the job that they're bringing to you, whether it is a small problem job or a big problem job. Before I jump to pricing strategies, I'm just gonna take a quick pause to give you guys a chance to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It just helps my channel grow and I can keep making videos like this now back to pricing strategies. There's four key strategies that I li like to walk through with my prospective client. Number one is I start by educating the client on the licensing system because not all clients are aware of how illustrations work. And so be by being clear about how you work, what is your process, then the client has a better understanding of your approach to it. Number two is walking through your process. I think it's essential that the client understands how you work and the better they understand your process, the less friction it is going to be for you to produce the work um, and to get the answers you need to produce the best type of work. So number three is state your MVE, your minimal viable engagement. So as you grow in your experience as an illustrator, you're going to have a value in your head at which you want to start at. And that's based on, you know, lots of experience within the field and and saying at this stage in my career at this time the least i want to get paid for a job is this certain amount and that amount then becomes the lowest point at which you're going to go so no job that comes through your door do you drop your price below that point and so if you have that in mind you state that to the client then you can vet the client to see if they're the right fit for you. Number four is using a tiered pricing system. So when a client isn't so forthcoming on the budget and they might be a little bit on the friends, using a three option system might shift their perspective from, I'm not sure if I'm going to work with them to which option should I pick? And so the three options are option one is the basics. It's the get the job done package where there's no fluff, there's nothing really extra in it. It's just um, the bare minimum that you can present within a package. And of course, even within a bare minimum, always strive to do a little bit extra so that the client leaves satisfied, feeling like they get a, a great bargain. Option two is what I like to call the sweet spot. It goes that little mile extra than your essential package. It gives them, show, it shows them what else you can do, what sort of usage rights are within the scope of that, what sort of hand holding process there is. For instance, uh, 
a few more revisions, a few more meetings are included within that package, but it's not the full thing. And last but not least is all in. So this is your five star treatment. You're getting extra revision rounds. They're getting uh, access to more usage rights. You're basically giving them more access to you and more access to your time. That's it for me. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.